Good evening. Good evening, everyone. How are y'all doing? I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, let me get some thumbs up or something. Just to let me know you hear me and all is well. Okay. I don't have any yet. I hope you all can hear me. Can you all hear me? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, AJ. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Dorian. Y'all know I'm not Bishop or Pastor Leslie, but I am Minister Dorian. I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. And tonight we're going to um, continue in the same vein, of course, that we've been in. Uh, Bishop on Sundays have been unwrapping Christ for us and, and, and unwrapping Jesus and all the so, so many things that go with being who he is and who he is for us, through us and in us. So tonight we're going to continue on in that. Um, wait, first let me pray before I don't want to forget. So let me pray. Father, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word as it goes forth. Father God, that it is on good ground, Father, and that we will learn from it. We will continue to grow from it and we will continue to unwrap Jesus and all that he means to us. Good evening again, everyone. I first want to remind you, you all know we are two days away from Christmas. So no, wait a minute. Yeah, two days. I was about to say one day, but it's two days. So Friday morning, do not forget, Friday morning at 10 a.m., we will have Christmas Day service. So I want everyone to say Friday morning at 10 a.m., we will have Christmas morning service. And you do not want to miss that, okay? So as I said, Bishop has been talking about unwrapping Christ. So tonight... I thought how wonderful it would be if we talked about this gift of Jesus, this gift that we've been unwrapping for the last couple of Sundays, this gift that has just been evolving in our hearts and in our minds and exploding in ways that we never thought before. It's, it's, it's this like James, it says in James 1 and 17 that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Who is this good and perfect gift? What is this ultimate gift that is indescribable according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 6? Who is this gift? What is this gift? Not 9 and 6, 2 Corinthians 9 and 15, excuse me. This indescribable gift, this gift is Jesus. And Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. Jesus is the most special child that has ever been born. And he is a gift from God, not only for me, but for you as well. And we're in this Christmas season and in this Christmas time when there is a, a, a feeling of joy in the air or there's something special going on that you can't quite describe. It's some kindness or maybe love that you show towards strangers or those that you don't know. Well, I just want you to know that it is not just about that feeling. That this is the time that God gave us Jesus. And I call Jesus the gift that keeps on giving. So let us unwrap that gift tonight. And let me show you some ways that we can continue to receive from this special gift. I'm telling you guys, I was so excited to get this because I love to talk about Jesus and the fact that he is the gift that keeps on giving anything and everything that you need from Jesus is available to you. 
It's the gift that keeps on giving. I want you all to go with me to Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. If you have your Bibles with you, read along. If you don't, pay attention and take good notes. We learn. We already know. Bishop always teach us to take notes. So we want to make sure that we're taking notes so we can get the full understanding and conclusion of the matter. So in Isaiah chapter 9, starting at verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, I want to read this from the message version, and I want you all to pay close. I love the message version. It breaks it all the way down so you get a full and complete understanding of who this gift is really is. For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His name will be amazing. Counselor, strong God, eternal father, prince of wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there'll be no limits to his wholeness he brings. This is the gift that keeps on giving. Now let's talk about this gift, you guys, because I want to point out two things from this scripture alone. First, we hear that a child is born for us. And it says, the child shall be born to us. A son shall be given so we have a child born, but then a son is given. What's the difference in those two words? What's the difference in those two phrases? Well, I'm glad you asked. The child is born is the humanity side of Jesus. It's the earthly side of him. It's the son of man. But then that same verse of scripture goes on to tell us a son is given. That's the divinity of who he is. That's the, the heavenly part of who he is. It's the son of God. So we have a child that is born, humanity. A son that is given, divinity. A child that is born, earthly. A son that is given, heavenly. A child that is born as the son of man. A son is given as a son of God. He is a gift to us. This son of, of, of God, this child that is born. And he was given to us. The amplified version of that says, For unto us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is who he is to us, you guys. This perfect gift. How important is it to give? How important is it to have this son of God? Let me tell you more about him. You know, Bishop always tells us, have two or three witnesses. Make sure you plead your case. So I'm telling you about this son. Now I want to plead the case to you of who he is and why it is so important that he is the gift that keeps on giving. Jesus died for us. It's not a revelation to us. I know that. But that's a gift that God gave us because he so loved us. You all know where I'm going. Let's go to John 3, 16. Because yes, Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving, but God started the giving. Let us go to John 3, 16. 
we know a very familiar verse of scripture. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave. He started this giving thing. And he gave what he loved so much. It was his beloved son. So that teaches us some things right there, you guys. When we give, make it be a gift that's precious to you. Make it be a gift that means something to you. Let that gift be something that's sacrificial from you. And it will be a memorial in the sight of God. He started us off with this gift of this grace of giving. And he gave us his son, Jesus. And Jesus is this gift that we receive that keeps on giving to us. He gives to us in healing. He gives to us in prosperity. He gives to us in any area of our lives. You can never be God given no matter how hard you try. How many times have we heard that during offering? Well, let me tell you, we can live lives of giving just like Jesus did. Jesus gave all that he had and when he couldn't give anymore, he gave yet again. Well, Mr. Minister Dorian, what you talking about when he couldn't give anymore? When he couldn't give anymore, when he died on the cross, when he died and got up, we got up. And when, he, when we got up, we should be doing the same thing that Jesus was doing, giving out into the world. And we can do that in so many different ways, you guys. I'm talking about this gift that keep on giving is Jesus, and we want to emulate him. We're supposed to be like him. How about we're supposed to do what he does and even greater work shall we do? Well, Jesus gave and he gave it lovingly. He gave it affectionately and he gave it with a pure heart and he gave sacrificially even his own life for you and I. And as I was studying this and I was like, Lord, we've been unwrapping Jesus practically all month. We can't exhaust what his gift means to us. But how about what our gift means to him? The scripture came to mind for me, you guys, and I'm sure you all heard it. It's a very familiar verse of scripture. Your gift will make room for you. That scripture is actually found in Proverbs 18 and 16. And I know what some of you are probably thinking. Well, Minister Dorian, what does that have to do with the gift that keeps on giving? Because that's about... Uh, uh, your talents and your gifts and what you have. Well, let's read it closely because we know at New Beginnings, we've been taught and we've been taught well. And we know that the word of God is pregnant and it gives new facets of revelation knowledge every time we read it, every time we hear it, and every time we see it. And as I began to unfold that scripture and I looked at that scripture in the literal Hebrew, which is the original Hebrew that it was written in. And let me tell you guys what I found out. I'm so excited about this scripture. This scripture is Proverbs 18, 16. Proverbs 18, 16. Let's go there together. Proverbs 18 and 16. And I want to show you guys why it's so important to give and why we have Jesus as the ultimate gift that continues to give back to us. Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man gift makes room for him and bringeth him before great men. Now, let me tell you, I'm going to break that down for you. First of all, it's two different things that it's talking about. A man gifts make room for him and that word and is a conjunction word, so that means also. So not only is a man gift make room for him, but it says it brings him before great men. But I want to read to you all that word gift. I want us to tie in on that. A man's gift makes room for him. I looked up that word, the original Hebrew word. Get ready for this. Matter of fact, sit down. Sit down. 
Get ready for this. The original Hebrew word for gift in this scripture is not talking about your talent. It's a present. It is a offering. It is a gift. It says that word is, I'm going to spell it for you. The original Hebrew word for gift in Proverbs 18, 16 is matan. M-A-T-T-A-N. That word means gift, offering, present. So if we will put it in its original context, you guys, in its original context, and we read that scripture again, let me tell you what we're really saying. A man's present will broaden cause to expand or create opportunity for him. And a man's present will bring him before great men. Now, come on now. Come on now. Did y'all catch that? The same thing, but in its original meaning. Your present will bring you before great men because that, that, that word uh, door simply means to broaden, to expand. So when we give, you guys, how important is it to give? When we give, we are opening up doors of opportunity for ourselves. We are causing expansion to happen. And because remember, I told you it does two things. And it brings us before great men. Oh, come on now. That's good news. That is good news, you guys. Your gift will make room for you. But that gift is not a skill set. That gift is a matter of the heart and how you give a present, an offering that you are coming up with to honor God with. Oh, baby, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's Jesus. Didn't God show us how to give? If we remember John 3, 16, we just looked at it. For God so loved, so we should love when we're about to give. Because that should be the motivating factor. God so loved the world that he gave. I remember... I was talking to Pastor Leslie. I love Pastor Leslie. Y'all, we love our first lady. And I was talking to Pastor Leslie, and I said, Pastor Leslie, you are always doing stuff for folks. You are always got to do something for somebody. Just be sure nobody just, you know, let some folks try to do stuff on their own sometime, Pastor Leslie. You try to do stuff for everybody. And I'm going to tell you something she said to me. She said, Dorian... If I don't give, something inside of me would bust open. I would come bust if I can't give. And I thought, wow, I think I'll be all right. But it was a matter of the heart. Because the love should be the motivating factor, not the need of the person. See, we always look at, oh, well, they don't need something. But did God say do it? If he moves it on your heart to give, it don't matter what state the person is in. Just do it because God said to do it. And I started saying, I, I, after I got done talking with her, y'all, I repented. I said, Lord, I don't feel like that. But I had to get a deeper revelation of the love of God and a deeper relationship with God so that my heart start conforming to that because I wanted to give like God gave. And so now I seek ways to be a blessing. And the word tells us it's more blessed to give than to receive. You are the giver gets more blessed than the receiver. That don't make no sense. Try it. Try it out. 
I double dog dare you to give like you never gave before. But purpose it in your heart. Give with love and give just as God gave Jesus and just as Jesus keeps giving us. That's so powerful, y'all. A gift that makes room for you and brings you before great men. Whoever thought an offering can do that? Whoever thought a present can do that? Live our lives to be blessed into others. Let me tell you what the um, NIV version says about that same scripture. A man, it says, a gift opens the way for the giver and ushers him into the presence of the great. Woo! A gift opens the way for the giver. And ushers him into the presence. Not the person receiving. Did y'all catch that? But the giver gets ushered. Now who does the ushering? Jesus. He ushers us into the way that we should go. And as we continue to give. It says that he will usher us into the presence of great men. A gift will open doors of opportunity. I want you all to think about that. And we're not given to get, but we're giving to love. For God so loved, how much more should we love? How much more should a seed meet every need? And no, it's just not about giving financially. How about giving of your time, giving of your heart, Giving love. We're the only Jesus that some people will ever see. They don't know this gift that keeps on giving unless we continue to share him. Speaking of sharing, I want to share with you all because the word tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. And I'm sitting here talking about the gift that keeps on giving. And let me tell you something about that gift. It opens doors that no man can shut. And it closes doors that no man can open. I personally know of what I'm speaking. And it's not from Mary or Paul or Mark or John. It's from me. Because a seed met every need that I had. What you all don't know is, or maybe some of you do, is that I recently purchased my first home. And let me tell you about that process. Why are you talking about that now, Minister Doran? What does this have to do with the gift that keeps on giving? I'll let you know. That gift, Jesus because of that gift, I wanted to give. And I started to give. And we were in future now. No, no, we were not. We were bringing up the $100,000 for our down payment at New Beginnings. Which we've done, by the way, and surpassed it because why? Our gift makes room for us and opens up doors of opportunity and brings us before great men. Anyway. Let me get back to my testimony. An opportunity to give. The Lord said, give a thousand dollars. I was like, okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was like, oh Lord. <laughs> but I gave a thousand dollars. I got it together real fast. Trust me, because now I'm like, I'm working on something. I gave a thousand dollars. Okay, here you go, Lord. The next thing I heard in my spirit, and this was probably about a couple of weeks later, could even been a month. Call Alonzo and, and apply for a mortgage loan. It's like, Lord, 
I got to do this. My credit score not high enough. You know, I got certain stuff. I got to do. Uh, he said it again. Call and get your mortgage loan. I said, okay. I called. Y'all, I got approved for the loan. Here I go. I asked for a small amount. Something uh, like, I just throw a figure out there, $100,000. How about after I turned it in, got the loan, they called me back and said, can we give you more than what you asked for? What? Can you give me more than what I asked for? I've been getting denied all this time. A seed will meet every need. So I said, yeah, how much you want to give me? And you know what he said? I'm not going to tell y'all none of your business. But it was double what I put down on the paper what I asked for. So now I see God working. God is moving. And he reminded me, you got seed in the ground. Call on your harvest. Call on your harvest for the seed that you've sown. I'm telling y'all, this is still the year of restoration. That We learned that at the beginning of the year. Didn't Bishop tell us this is a year to restore all? It is not over. We are still in this year. I don't care what it looks like. Restoration is still yours and it's still mine. Let me keep telling you what happened next. After that, I got approved for the loan. I said, okay, let me start looking for my house. I started looking, couldn't find nothing, couldn't find nothing. I started looking. I didn't like any house I went to. Then finally, uh, my realtor, Misha, she contacted me and said, let's look at this house. It haven't even been put on the market yet. What? So I said, okay. So we went to the house. Zero days on the market. I walked in and I said, this is it. Walked through the house. I said, this is it. Put an offer on the house. They not only accepted my offer with me being the first person to ever come in the house. They accepted my offer and I countered what they were asking and they agreed to my counter. First person that ever looked at the house. And then they, they, they added things that I wasn't even asking for. And I didn't have to pay extra for it. When I tell you your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men, your present will broaden, will broaden and cause expansion for you. It will give you favor, praise God. And so I said, I was saying yes to everything. Yeah, sure. Give me that. Give me that. I'll take that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Yes, it was divine favor. And then on top of that, you guys, that's not all. I know you're thinking, this too much. How much more could it be? I get another call from my mortgage, uh, my mortgage loan, Alonzo. That's who he is. We got folks right in the house. We, they right in the house, go to New Beginnings. Called me and said, is this amount that you have to pay down, is that working for you? I said, huh? Do you want to pay? I said, well, if I can, he said, how about if we, let's see if we can get you a lower interest rate because one just came out in the market, the lowest that it's ever been. I said, okay. He said, I need you to do a couple of things. You might have to refinance after six months of being in your home, but we'll get you that note. We'll get you that, uh, that, in, that uh, interest rate. I said, okay, great. What do we have to do? Told me what we had to do. He called me back in three days and said, guess what? The interest rate that I was talking about that you can get in six months, it's available for you now. And not only that, it's allowing me to give it to you right in the middle of the contract. We were already in. My interest rate was lowered. I was like, oh my God. From a seed, you guys. From sowing into good ground. New beginnings. My present broadened and caused an expansion to take place. And so my interest rate was lowered. 
And not only that, you know where the interest rate lower, the amount of your, of your monthly payment goes down. And this is at a time when it seems like everything is going wrong in the world. But I remembered the word from the man of God from January, from December 31st when he said, this is restoration. So even though we may be going through COVID-19, I lost loved ones during COVID-19. I lost this year. And I had to, Bishop always talk about, go back and read the story. But this time I had to go back and read what was said at the beginning of this year. It's restoration. So no matter what it looked like, I wasn't going to allow the devil to keep me from the restoration that was promised at the beginning of the year. Pastor Leslie always say the darker the night, bam, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just saw it. <laughs> the darker the night, the brighter the light. Your gift will make room for you. What do you have to give? And I was without a home, is what a lot of you all don't know. That was my restoration. In the midst of a pandemic, from a seed, when God says so, so, you don't know what's on the other side of that seed. You don't know what's on the other side of that gift. You don't know what's on the other side of that present. But what you do know that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Jesus is the ultimate gift. And he keeps on giving. And if Jesus keeps on giving, then so should we. Because I believe with all my heart that when I sowed that seed, when I gave a gift, and then I gave on top of the thousand. Because he prompted me again. He said, give again. And by this time, I'm like, whatever you say, I gave again. And then guess what, you guys? I got another phone call. Your closing been pushed up. We ready for you to close now. You don't even have to wait. What you need to buy, don't worry about a refrigerator. They giving it to you. Washer, dryer, they giving it to you. Whatever... Long, outside deck built, they giving it to you. They giving you the furniture that's on it. When I went to the closing, the man that sat on the other side of me, older white gentleman that owned this home, he said to me, oh, y'all, this is so good. I want... He said, I prayed about who to sell my house to. And when you came, I knew it was you. He was a pastor. I never knew that. And he said, I knew, and we didn't need to look at no other person but you. And I thought, oh, my God. Because when I first came to look at the house, I forgot to tell y'all why Misha and I were in here. They didn't leave. They were circling the block. So they got a chance to see me. They got a chance, and they were just looking at me. And I said, Misha, this car keep going by. And she said, that could be the owners. So skin color wasn't a barrier. Nothing is a barrier when it's God. When he is the gift that keeps on giving, he teaches us to give and keep on giving. And look what happens it was more blessed for me to give. Not only did I edify God, not only did I help to, to build the kingdom and to bring the kingdom up, because I gave to new beginnings, good ground to sow into. I double dog dare you to give. Not just because you say, oh, I want to see if this works. No, 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 no. Because for God so loved, he gave. Oh, it got to be a hard thing. You got to love God so much that you will give because that's when it becomes selfless. That's when you die to self. When you deny yourself and you give out of the abundance of your heart. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together. We'll get to that. That running over. And today, I am sitting in the house as I am ministering this word to you guys about the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, I know him personally. I have a personal relationship with him. In the middle of a pandemic, when they're saying, oh, 2020, I wish it'll hurry up and end. I'm thinking 2020 has been good to me. Have I had some losses? Yes. But do they outweigh the wins? No. Because God knew that 2020 was going to be here. He knew that COVID was going to be here long before we ever were on this earth. I received a promotion at work. Matter of fact, I received two in the middle of a pandemic. After, I, after the Lord told me to sow again, I sowed again. And after that seed, I got promotion at work in an area that I wasn't even supposed to be eligible to move out of for 18 months. I was in it for six months. And God said, the time is now. And people around me say, how you get to move? How you get promoted? You just been in there for six months. I said, baby, I don't question God. And you don't question God. When he says do it, do what he say to do. I guarantee you, you will be more blessed to give than to receive. Then on top of them saying, how did you get this promotion? You just been in there six, seven months. I'm sorry. A month after I got that promotion, I got another one. And so we all know promotion comes where? Not from man, but from God. And when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And God is trying to get us set up to be in authority. He is trying to get us set up to be promoted. But what if all of that is wrapped up into your present? What do you have to give? Jesus, the ultimate gift that keeps on giving. What do you have to broaden and expand your opportunities? What if your next breakthrough is a seed away? Bishop says it all the time, y'all. I don't have, you can't afford to give. We can't afford not to give. Because what I can do with the five or the ten dollars I had, God has done exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask, think, or imagine. And guess what, you guys? He is no respecter of persons. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Jesus, the gift that keeps on giving. You all may say, well, you know what, Minister Dorian, I, I hear what you're saying and all oh, it sounds so good. But I don't know Jesus like that. I need to know how to get to this gift that keep on giving. Well, let me introduce you to a way. You guys, if you are here under the sound of my voice, and I won't matter of fact, everybody just repeat after me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. And save me now. Lord, take my life and do something wonderful with it. And just like that, you guys, you have invited Jesus in. 
and he has accepted the invitation. And as he continues to pour out to you, the only thing he wants you to do is to pour out to others. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. If you have received Jesus today, it's the best Christmas gift that you could have ever given and received. All of heaven is rejoicing. But now I want you all to do something for me. No, not for me. I want you to do something for yourself. Because it's opportunity to prosper right now and new beginnings. And we know that it is an opportunity indeed. I want you guys to sow into the word you've just heard. Reading again the original Hebrew. A man's present will broaden, cause to expand, or create opportunity for him. And man's present will bring him before great men. Whatever you have to give, whether it's the widow's might, or you can give well beyond that. Give with your heart in it. For we know in 2 Corinthians, that same scripture that started this whole thing off, 2 Corinthians 9, 15, if we were read up from that, it's the scripture that we use all the time in our giving. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, Give, and it will be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall me and give unto your bosom. And then he goes on to say, Don't give it grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. So by now, I'm sure you all have gathered up every seed, every gift, every offering, every present that you want to give to the Lord. I want you to hold that up and I'm going to pray over it. Right now, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the seed that will meet every need, Father. We thank you, Father God, that as they sow into good ground, new beginnings, that they will receive a 100-fold return in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm sorry I got excited. Some of you may say, wait a minute, Minister Dorian, I want to get in on that. Let me tell you how you can give. You can go to, uh, we have a P.O. box for those that's not real tech savvy and they want to mail it in. Mail that in to P.O. box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi. If you want to mail in your tithes or your offering. Or if you want to go use PayPal. It's newbeginningsclc.org. And my favorite, and I'm sure everybody, a lot of people, I'm not going to say everybody because we got some mamas on here. Cash app. That's the dollar sign, New Beginnings, CLC. Those are three ways that you have to give. To give and watch and see what God does with it. I want you all to be blessed. I want you all to enjoy the rest of your evening. I want to see all of you back Friday morning at 10 a.m. as the day of Christmas. And we are going to get a word from Bishop. And I want you all to think, how can I be a blessing? What do I have to give? Jesus, the ultimate gift. And he's the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. I love all of you. I can't wait till, you, till we can see each other in person again. And be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Bishop and Pastor Leslie, for the opportunity. Love my church family. Love y'all so much. Bye-bye.